guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Alex from Alex's Innovations, and today I'm going to be doing another knot with me. I did a knot with me last time. I think I was making my rainbow arrowhead, and I think you guys seem to like that a lot, and I had fun making it. And it's nice to have some sort of audience interaction. I think I like it when I can incorporate my followers' thoughts and opinions and contributions into my own videos. And so I added another question box on my Instagram, just asking you guys to ask me questions. And a lot of you guys asked some really interesting questions that I wanted to talk about and I think it would be fun. So if you're stuck at home due to the coronavirus or if this is magically over but you feel lonely and just kind of want to vibe and not with me, then go ahead, let's, let's all chill together. <laughs> so the first question is a very important question. Do you like frogs? And yes, I think that is a very important for me as a lesbian to like frogs and it's good because I do like frogs. Um, I, I don't really discriminate, I like all colors of frogs. Um, I think the brown ones are really cute because they're chunky, but they're all kind of cute and I like them a lot. <laughs> Another one is where is your favorite place to knot? This sounds kind of sad, but like at the same place where I do my work, <laughs> which is right here on my desk where I'm knotting because it, I guess, has an air of productivity because it's where I do my homework, although it could have like a reverse uh, effect because it's where I like chill out and make bracelets and so when I'm doing homework it might not be seen as like a place of productivity <laughs> but anyway um, I like it because my like the desk is at a perfect height for me and I can sort of structure everything <laughs> clearly I think it also allows for a little bit of like creative spirit but speaking of creativity I'm actually working on an improvising bracelet so last week I I guess hopefully I'll be releasing this video after my freestyling the bracelet with me video. And so this bracelet is basically me freestyling, so I'm not following a pattern here, I'm just nodding whatever I feel like, and so this bracelet is actually really nice for answering questions, because then I don't really have to think too much about the pattern I'm going to be doing, and can kind of focus more on the questions that I'm going to be answering. So if you're wondering what the heck is going on here, well, now you know. <laughs> the next question is, what is your favorite song or artist? My music taste changes a lot, but currently I'm listening to Imagine Dragons, Billie Eilish, Lord, um, Ed Sheeran a little bit, AJR. I also really like a lot of soundtrack composers. They're all really good and I, I like them all. I actually have a whole playlist on Spotify of just soundtracks I like and I use to study and somehow listening to Pirates of the Caribbean while studying is, makes me like really productive. Like it's not even funny how much I can get done when listening to Hans Zimmer's soundtracks. So I guess I have a kind of diverse music taste. How many bracelets do you make a week? In quarantine, before school started, I, I'm saying before school started, like my school, high school didn't technically end until middle of June, but I wasn't really doing real work. Like I made bracelets all day and then I'd sort of stay up until like six in the morning and sort of combining between bracelets and then doing some, you know, physics, but it wasn't really that assignment oriented. Um, the only really assignments I had were studying for AP exams, which weren't really like assignment oriented. I guess I could kind of study at my own pace. No one really knew how to set up a learning plan and so that was kind of hard. Then I would make a lot, not a lot, but for me it feels like a lot because I was nodding a very long time, but obviously bracelets take a while. <laughs> That's a very obvious statement. I don't know, rough estimate, maybe like four or five bracelets a week, maybe six when I wasn't um, studying, but now I'm a full-time college student and so I'm making a lot less a week, maybe like one or two. Um, be, like first month or six weeks or so, I wasn't really making any and then I started picking up a little bit because I realized like I had to make tutorials and my Zoom classes were kind of boring because I need something to keep my hands busy. so I think it was a good idea um, to pick them back up again. Who is your favorite Harry Potter character? I really like Hermione. <laughs> she's very smart and I kind of aspire to be her. I think she's very charismatic. I like the scene where she punches Draco in the face. That's one of the highlights I think of the series. I also like Emma Watson, the actress who plays her. She's very smart. She really uses her platform to do good things. Um, and I really respect her and also the character. <laughs> How long did it take for your business to take off? It took a really, really long time. Um, I started my business on eBay in June of 2016. I got maybe five sales during the two years I was doing it. I didn't really actively start marketing until 2017. I think I started my Instagram in July of 2017 or so. But even with that, I made about five sales and I, I go into why eBay isn't that great of a platform in my uh, Etsy crash course video because that is a another discussion, but it is very important if you're 
thinking about selling on eBay or on Etsy. But after I switched to Etsy, I switched to Etsy in October of 2018, so a little more than two years. I had sold, <laughs> first month I made like $3 in profit, one month I think I made negative amount in profit. And when you say like take off, quote unquote, that's sort of subjective. I mean, one person might say that like a sale a week is like really good and that's a really good spot. Others might say like 100 sales a week and I'm not near that. I'm not nearly <laughs> near that at all. Really, I guess from the time I would consider like starting my business to uh, when it actually like took off, I would say, I don't, I don't wanna discourage you, but it was like a good two and a half years probably. Things are probably easier now because social media is just more optimized for selling stuff than it was four years ago. So that's probably a better idea. Also, you can just post consistently, um, stay engaged with your followers. Those are both really good strategies for sort of growing your business. Another question is, how's your day been? It's been okay. Um, it's Monday, I just had fall break. Fall break was kind of exhausting for personal reasons. I won't really go into it. This week I have four and three midterms that I kind of procrastinated studying on, but last night I got really into my business midterm because I felt inspired because spring semester classes are coming up soon, like, you know, like registration for them. And so I need to know whether or not I'm gonna take another class for my uh, hopeful entrepreneurship minor. So I was inspired to study for my business midterm. So yeah, other than that, today I had a chemistry class at 10. So I woke up at like 9.45 as one does. And then I took the class and then I worked on more on studying for my business midterm. And then I had a chemical engineering class. And then I set up and filmed the freestyling a bracelet video, which is like, I guess still in progress because I'm gonna use this footage for the knot with me in that bracelet video. <laughs> so I guess bracelet-ception. And now it's about 3.15 and I'm filming this. Are you still in college or you came home due to COVID? Um, so I'm going to Johns Hopkins and so Johns Hopkins is sort of like the main um, source for information and so they kind of told us really late whether or not we were going back. The term started the last week of August and we weren't told about whether or not we were going back until like midway through the second week. <laughs> so we really had like two and a half weeks of notice and I was really, I really thought we were going to go to campus because they kind of told us we were and I got really excited and they're like, you're going but don't tell anyone about it and we're like oh okay we'll be quiet and then <laughs> they said you're not going so I actually have not been to campus um in two and a half years because that's when I visited it last was two and a half years ago <laughs> but since then I haven't been to campus and the university is planning to tell us if we're going back or not in November but they also told us earlier that they were going to tell us earlier <laughs> it's really confusing for the fall semester they told us that they were going to tell us in like May and then June and then July and then finally August and so they have promised us a decision by Thanksgiving today is the end of October but I don't know if they're going to tell us like as promised or if they're gonna make us wait but no right now I'm home another question is if you could time travel would you go into the future or the past it seems like not a great answer but I feel like I would go to the 1990s first of all they uh, the Cold War ended which I think would be really cool because you could all party with your friends about like not fear of like imminent nuclear death but also because it was when technology was taking off and before all the negative effects sort of started like i kind of grew up with technology but also my family was kind of restrictive on technology and i think it really started taking off like a couple years so i think it would be cool to grow up in that era where you were kind of finding out about technology when you're like a teen like when the internet, I don't, <laughs> I probably should do my research, but I feel like the 90s would be a fun time. One question is, do you just make orders all day? And the answer is no, no, I do not. I am a full-time student in college, as I mentioned before. And so the vast majority of the day I spend studying and working on schoolwork and other sorts of homework, academic studying. If we're talking pure lack of academics, so like not making bracelets during Zoom lectures, I probably not for about an hour every three days or so. I equate uh, making bracelets in my free time with watching Criminal Minds or another TV series, but it's been Criminal Minds for a couple months now. And I haven't really watched Criminal Minds since Thursday or Friday, and it's Monday now. And it was fall break, so I, I don't know what I was doing there. Although I did watch some movies with my family yesterday. But yeah, I don't really have that much time. I 
usually pack orders in like a really rushed manner like you think oh packing orders putting stuff into a mailer doesn't take very long it takes me like at least an hour when i'm packing orders because i want to do everything just right i take time to write notes to all of my buyers because i'm so grateful for their business and i want them to know that so that sort of takes me <laughs> a really long time someone asked what did you start on youtube bracelet book instagram or etsy ebay i started in june 2016 and then i started my instagram at uh, july 2017 around there and so that was to like start to promote that and then I started my Etsy in October of 2018 and then I think I started my TikTok in December of 2019 what else bracelet book I start I don't remember the exact date but it was like a year and a half ago so that would place it before the TikTok which makes sense but after everything else so yeah that timeline does make sense so I think in order it was eBay Instagram get rid of eBay and then get Etsy <laughs> bracelet book and then TikTok <laughs> someone asked are you going to sneak streaky into college with you for his loviness i wish but for logistical reasons no one i don't want to get kicked out of my dorm two the rest of my family is going to miss him <laughs> three i don't know how comfortable i feel taking care of like an animal even if he was allowed i wouldn't really feel comfortable taking care of him by myself like without a parent i guess first of all it would be in like a really small space and i feel like he'd get bored and i can't really take him outside because he's not used to being outside he would probably run away like they do make harnesses but it's really hard for him to walk in them if i was like in a really bad situation mentally then i could consider like getting a cat as a, an emotional support animal but i'm not really in that position it's not necessary no, i'm thankful for it being not necessary because yeah having an emotional su support animal is great but mental illness really isn't um and it's as a coping mechanism or as a luxury it meaning the animal so no, I'm not gonna sneak him in, but I wish I could. Someone asked, do you think that you'll be making bracelets far into the future, like the rest of your life? Probably as a hobby, um, until I get arthritis and can't do it anymore, because my dad has arthritis and I'm a little scared I'm gonna get it too. He didn't make bracelets, but he was a dentist for like a couple decades, and so that involves very precise work with his hands as well, um, and he does have arthritis because of that, so I'm a little scared, but until my hands start hurting, I think I'll make it sort of as like a hobby, like some people like knit or crochet or so, and I think I would make bracelets instead. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed these questions and let me know if you want me to do more of these um, or if you have other ideas. Uh, yeah, if you want to check out my Instagram so you can help me make better videos by like responding to polls and just sort of supporting my content, my Instagram is Alex Innovations, and you can check out my Etsy. The link is in the description and support a small business. <laughs> Yay! So thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye!